Hello again and welcome to another one of my tutorials. This one's on the cerebellum and it's going to be a two-parter. In the first one we're going to deal with the basic anatomy. We're going to deal with broad functions and we're going to deal with connections but mainly inputs and these are going to be in relation to the functions. In a second tutorial we'll follow this up and talk about outputs and then implications for what happens when the cerebellum doesn't work properly and some of the symptoms that we might expect to find. So first of all we're going to look at this diagram. It's a pretty cruddy diagram. It's not my, uh, my strong point drawing I'm afraid but I think it will serve our purposes um, quite well here. It's a posterior view so you have to imagine that this structure here which I'm marking in red is the brain stem. You're viewing it posteriorly so you're looking down onto the fourth ventricle which would be an open space within the uh, in this part of the, uh, the, the brain stem. You can see some connections between the brain stem and a structure that I've drawn over here to your left and this structure is one cerebellar hemisphere, there should be one on the other side um, as you can imagine with the connections. So we can see the symmetry there. The cerebellar hemisphere is quite similar to the cerebral hemisphere in the sense that it has a cortex on the outside coloured in grey here. It has some white matter below the cortex and then within that white matter we have some deep nuclei. Now that is pretty similar if not identical to the way in which the cerebral cortex is arranged. We have some different names and terminology here though but let's just talk about the anatomy. First of all we have a left and right hemisphere so let's just abbreviate that down here. We have some of the folding on the outside surface of the cortex which is slightly different in appearance to that of the cerebral cortex and they're more like straight lines than, than folds like the sulcine gyri that you might find on the surface of the cerebrum. These are called folia. We have a midline structure known as the vermis and we really cannot see that here but it's on the midline. We also have a structure in here which is called the folloculus and that's quite close to some of these structures here which connect to the cerebellum. Now they have names and their name, I'm going to draw this in a different colour, is called peduncles. They're called cerebellar peduncles and we have three of those. Let's just label them here. We have a superior cerebellar peduncle, we have a middle cerebellar peduncle and an inferior cerebellar peduncle. And it's the middle cerebellar peduncle which is the largest of the three. And they all connect to the brainstem. So this is our basic anatomy and now we're going to talk about the functions so very brief overview of what the cerebellum does. So number one, and this is really in order of sophistication as well, um, we have a role in what we call equilibrium and this really is the state of the body regarding stability and balance. The next one, number two, is to do with the position of our muscles and feeding back to the cerebellum will be information regarding not only the position of our muscles but also information regarding muscle tone and also joint position as well. So the cerebellum needs to receive sensory information on an unconscious level that tells it whereabouts the, the muscles are in terms of their preparedness for, for movement. Number three, which is the most sophisticated function, is really about coordination of movement and smooth flowing movements that offer us fluidity and enable us to quickly react or try and correct ongoing movements in real time and 
The, the way in which it does this is because it's connected to the cerebral cortex and it can base existing movements on past experience which gives it a real advantage in terms of trying to predict movement not only of ourselves but also of others as well. So let's now have a look at some of the connections. I've written this in grey this time, I don't think that will matter too much. So, first of all, we're going to be talking about the connections of each of those functions in turn. So number one, starting with that role of equilibrium and stability and balance, we're going to have connections from the vestibular apparatus which is the structure which is associated with the function of balance and equilibrium and it's going to be ipsilateral connections through the inferior cerebellar peduncle to a structure known as the folloculus and this is quite a quick reaction of vestibular information that allows the cerebellum to compute how to alter movement of the body to correct uh, balance and equilibrium. Number two is information, remember, regarding the position of muscles and the position of joints and, of course, uh, the degree of muscle tone that we have. Now, information from a tract known which is a sensory tract known as the spino cerebellar tract is carrying information from Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindle fibers that carry that type of information and they're carrying that ipsilaterally that's ipsilateral and that information is going to reach the cerebellum via the inferior cerebellar peduncle and the superior cerebellar peduncle. And again, this is really about control of trunk and limb movements and dealing with maintaining stability through um, ongoing sensory information that comes back unconsciously through the spino cerebellar tract. And that type of information is often referred to as proprioceptive information. Number three we might have to go on to another page here, but we'll start here, is to do remember with the coordination aspect of cerebellar function. Now the inputs here to the cerebellum are coming from the cerebral cortex and they are going to enter through the larger middle cerebellar peduncle, but they will relay first through pontine nuclei. Remember the pons is part of the brainstem and the middle cerebellar peduncle is what connects the cerebellum to the pons. So we have a relay there of information coming from the cerebral cortex, decision making information about voluntary limb movement that will relay through the pontine nuclei and eventually reach the cerebellum through the middle cerebellar peduncle. And the job here is, as I said, coordination so if we continued here, we've also got um, the streamlining. So here we're going to streamline motor information. We're also going to rely on past experience from the cerebral cortex. So memories from within the cerebral cortex having an impact on ongoing movement. So this enables us to be able to predict our own movement and also the predictions of others based on past experiences. The other thing that it does, which is quite sophisticated, is it subtracts oops, get that right. It subtracts sensory experience from our own movements as these are considered to be less important because we are self-generated movements we kind of know what the sensory impact of those are going to be so the cerebellum subtracts that sensory information to 
allow more pertinent information to be processed. This is why it's, uh, it's very difficult, and this is something that's, um, that's evident in all cultures, it's very difficult to tickle yourself because it's a self-generated movement that the, uh, the prediction of that sensory information will be removed uh, by the cerebellum. It also offers one last thing, which is to fine-tune the force of movement. And this is also about the trajectory of movement as well. So this is really the most sophisticated element of cerebellar function and really is what separates us from lower organisms in the sense that we are able to blend voluntary controlled information coming from the cerebral cortex with cerebellar function in order to offer us very finely controlled movements that we can modify in real time. So that's a quick summary of the cerebellum part one and I will pick up things again in the second tutorial where I will cover uh, dysfunction and some of the symptoms that we get when the cerebellum doesn't work properly. Okay, I hope that was useful. Bye for now.